Back in 2013, Real Madrid fumbled the bag and missed the opportunity to sign Neymar, losing him to their bitter rivals Barcelona and ever since have been on a mission to find the next Brazilian superstar and sign him before it's too late. Prime examples include Vinicius Jr, Rodrigo in recent years, and now recently the 16 year old wonder kid signed two years in advance, Endrick, the Brazilian wonder kid who is making headlines all across South America, already winning a Brazilian championship with Palmeiras, Endrick Felipe Moreira de Souza, or just known as Endrick. Born in 2006, this kid should be in FIFA. However, thanks to EA's licensing issues, all the Brazilian league players aren't in the game. They're all just fake unlicensed players. So I've taken up that task of adding Endrick into the game myself. Trying to create him as realistically as possible, sign him for Real Madrid in July of 2024, and simulate his entire career. That's right, on club level, international level, we are taking full control of his career. Career, playing it out, this project is going to be a long haul. It's going to take 10 to 15 years of simulating just to get to his prime. Is he going to be a hit at Real Madrid, become a Galactico, or just become another one of their major money flops? Trap in, ladies and gentlemen. Believe the hype because we are boarding the Endrick train to success. He's a hot prospect. He's a wonder kid, and at the start of career mode, he is only 15 years of age. We haven't really tampered with his stats whatsoever. It's just the default attributes you get when you create a player, so I haven't toggled with anything, which sees him equate to a 53 overall so he's pretty much starting from scratch he's gonna have to work his way up he can play pretty much anywhere in attack center forward left wing right wing he is actually left footed five foot six and weighs 158 pounds with his four star skill moves one star weak foot i couldn't really control that however what we have given him is a couple of traits in his locker of course he's brazilian the south americans they love their flair so we've equipped him with the flair trait and flair passes if you've seen any of his highlight videos on instagram he's scored a couple of bicycle kicks in Brazil. So we've just added a fun one to spice things up. The bicycle kick straight. And the rest of the page doesn't really apply for good reading. No light green stats. Nothing really to boast about. He's a teenager. He's got plenty of time. And we won't be signing him for another two seasons. Valued at 425k on the transfer market. Who knows how much he's going to grow and develop in the next two seasons. Before he even arrives at the Santiago Bernabeu. Thanks to Real Madrid playing in that 4-3-3 false nine formation. He can slot and be the perfect replacement and all super sub for Benzema off the bench. You literally couldn't write it any better. Joining his fellow two countrymen in that attack in Trident. Vinicius Jr. and Rodrigo are awaiting his arrival. But for now, they got to play the long game. Wait it out. It just makes sense. He's the natural successor and heir to the throne of Big Ben's lead in the line up front. This short king has goals written all over him. The Real Madrid attacking trio is going to cause mayhem come 2024. Guys, let me know your thoughts on Hendrik down in the comments below. Is he just another overhyped YouTube show real merchant another brazilian that's gonna flop in europe or is he actually the real deal let's see what fifa think after one season unfortunately we can't check his goals and assists it's just not possible but what we can check is his attributes currently undergoing no training or development plans this is all just natural growth for some reason his heading accuracy is his first green stat whatsoever supercharged up to an 83 meanwhile everything else is pretty bare bones it's subpar at best but he's experienced a plus seven overall boost now up to a 60. His market value has risen, pretty much doubled, up to 850k. Now he's turned 16 and his current potential status is an exciting prospect, so that's guaranteed a 90 plus already. Season 2 has just gone completely off script for Hendrik because I thought he'd stay loyal to Palmeiras, spend his final days there before he moves to Real Madrid, but no, he has now departed to China for Changchun Yetai Football Club. Turning 17, I don't think that's in the real life contract. Hendrik, like many other Brazilians, has moved to China already. Mate, you're not Oscar or Hulk yet. Your career's not washed. You don't have to sell out to China. Again, thanks to the South American and European calendars being out of sync, we can't really check his goals or assists. What we can do is see his technical department, which is heading accuracy. It's now up to a 97. It also sees the likes of finishing, short passing, shot power, long shots, and curve all reach into the greens and become some of his main stats. But I don't even think someone that was five foot six would be notoriously known for his heading. It's a plus six overall boost boost and an upgrade to his overall. Now standing at 66 right before he joins Real Madrid. We're currently existing in the perfect timeline for Hendrik to join Real because Benzema is gone. They're in desperate need for a brand new starting centre forward. And you would never have guessed where the former Ballon d'Or winner has ended up. He has joined Harrogate Town for some reason. I don't know what has taken place. I've just simulated through the two years, but he has dropped down to the English fourth tier. Things that could only happen in FIFA. That one was completely out of my control. As the Frenchman will be 
be spending the last few years of his career in League 2. Finally, we get the chance to make the deal official and bring Endrick to Spain. Surely Real knows something that we don't because I don't know what's compelled them to spend over £60 million on an unproven teenager. Clearly, their scouts see something in him. As the last few details of the deal has been finalised, Endrick is now a Real Madrid player. And unlike real life, we have spent nearly a fraction of what Real Madrid have, literally under £4 million to secure his services. He is going to be the poster boy for Real Madrid's brand new era. Clearing out most of the old guard and bringing in a brand new Brazilian attacking trident. It's going to be the final puzzle piece in attack. And there you go, £3.55 million. Pounds. Just like that, we've got our Benzema replacement and the career simulation can finally kick off at Real Madrid. And thanks to that transfer move, he actually has potential to be special now. The 5'6 whiz kid has that confidence in him. He's already taken up the number nine. And naturally, we're going to dive into the development plan and straight away, we've got to improve that weak foot. We'll be applying the playmaker forward in his first season here in La Liga. We're going to have to rely on the training and development plans to do its job. Let's see how truly overpowered it really is. Can it do its magic on Endrick? Currently weighing in as the worst player on this Real Madrid roster, but trust me, I'm sure that's about to change. He is roaring and ready to go, ready to prove himself on the big stage. This is how he lines up in the current Real Madrid setup. This system, of course, accommodates his center forward role, playing alongside a Vinicius Jr. in his prime at 92, and a Rodrigo well on his way to becoming world-class at an 85. Everywhere you look, there is world-class talent surrounding him. Accommodating Ferendrick's arrival, let's see if the young lad sinks or swims here in season one. Guys, let me know down below, what are the wonder kids should we add to FIFA 23? What career should we play next and simulate through? It hasn't taken him long, but he's become a Spanish champion with Real Madrid, now finishing top of La Liga in his first season, third year in his career. Unfortunately, losing out in the Supercopa to Barca 4-1 and over in the Copa del Rey, they did take home the Spanish double there, so a little bit of domestic cup silverware and the league title, Hendricks taken home. He's slowly being injected with that winner's DNA. And the longer he stays at Real Madrid, the bigger his trophy cabinet is about to get. However, they did lose out the Champions League final. 5-4 against Inter on penalties. Two trophies out of a possible four, though. That's a decent start. Individually, though, he is the only center forward at the club, so he's guaranteed as much game time as possible. Provided he stays fit and healthy, he's now downgraded to an exciting prospect in terms of potential. He's turned 18 and his first campaign in Spain. He's received a plus six upgrade now standing at a 72. Breaking into the 70s range, and this is how he ranks amongst the top goal scorers at the club, at being the fourth best with 10 goals and three assists in 42 appearances. He earned an average match rating of 6.75, but it's his fellow countrymen and other South Americans in the first team really carrying this squad, like Vinicius Jr., Rodrigo, even Fede Valverde. Can he climb the ranks and be amongst the best, be amongst the biggest stars in football? As his training development plan this year was that Trequartista. He did grind for that five-star weak foot and his attributes have improved as follows. His technical department now coming along nicely with two dark green stats, curve and short passing. Heading accuracy for some strange reason is nearly maxed out and is the best thing he has to offer as in terms of his financial value, he's sent a 104% boost now valued at 4.7 million pounds. It's Hendrick's fourth season as a professional but second at Real Madrid. We've got to try and avoid that second season syndrome. He's got the pressure of that Real Madrid number nine on the back of his jersey and this season in terms of training he'll be applied the Bombardier deep lying forward development plan attempting to get that attacking work rate up meanwhile improving his pace, shooting and aspects of his physical. 5 star skill moves is probably going to have to wait till season 3, that's a second priority and when he's lining up in a Real Madrid squad like this, anything is possible Season 4's campaigns come to a close and they back to back win La Liga, becoming Spanish champions again this time only by 1 point but again, Endrick knows nothing but success, nothing but life at the top. Becoming a tried and true Galactico, but losing out the Supercopa, that still evades him. 3-2 against Barcelona in the final, and over in the Copa del Rey, unfortunately, couldn't defend that crown. The Spanish Cup is won by Yatafe, and Real Madrid knocked out in the round of 16 to the eventual champions on penalties 4-3. The Champions League, though, we all know, for Real Madrid is a different ball game. With the most titles in Champions League history, they are looking to add even more to their collection as they made it all the way to the final again and against Celtic in one of the strangest final matchups you'll ever see. The big dance saw them prevail 4-1 and Endrick not only becomes a Spanish champion but now a European champion. He's earned himself a Champions League winning medal so let's see how much he actually contributed to the cause. Still one better than last time out. He still has that exciting
scouting prospect potential status. At 19 years of age, he's received a plus 7 and nearly breaking into the 80s range, standing out of 79. As his career simulation progresses, he's becoming more and more important to this Real Madrid team. Outscoring the likes of Lucas Paqueta and Rodrigo, he is the third top goal scorer with 19 goals and 4 assists in 53 appearances. Like I said, he's pretty much playing every single game with a total average match rating of 7.14. That is a career best. He is learning from the best, like Vinicius Jr. with double figures in both goals and assists. That's probably the next milestone he has to tick off in terms of his personal records. As the Bombardia development plan got him that high attack and work rate, his attributes are now starting to look a lot greener off the page. Heady accuracy has now maxed out to a 99. If he ever has the chance to win a header at 5 foot 6, I guess he's scoring them. Stamina now in the 80s, which we know is probably the most important stat in career mode. Shot power, long shots, finishing, and now starting to become his best areas of his game. 19 year old now financially valued at 29.5 million pounds. He's a long way away from that nine figure range, but boy oh boy, he has seen a meteoric rise. You thought the pressure of Real Madrid would get to him, but he's flourishing here in Spain with a 527% boost to his market value. That is amongst the highest I have ever seen in career mode in my time. Another two pieces of silverware to add to his collection. Four trophies in two seasons. I think that goes down as a successful campaign. All I know is that in season five, it's only going to get bigger and better. I feel bad for the young lad because pretty much every single one of his teammates are out at international duty, including Vinicius Jr. and Rodrigo representing Brazil. He's yet to get the call up for the 2026 World Cup, but let's cross our fingers and hope for the 2028 Copa America for the 2030 World Cup that the South American sensation will be in consideration by then. I guess for the time being, he's just going to put in that work on the training ground and on the pitch as we now apply the penetrator development plan. Personally, one of my favorites, if he wants to go down as a legendary all-time Brazilian, he just has to have five-star skill moves in the locker. It's a non-negotiable. Improving crucial attributes in the dribbling department like balance and composure, even up in stamina in the meantime. This season could see some of the highest growth and development yet. Let's hope he uses the lack of international call-up as motivation as he embarks on his third campaign here at the Santiago Bernabeu. It's taken quite a while, but season five of summer has seen Endrick actually have a bid put in for him by the first club ever that comes from Belgium, Club Bruges, with an offer of 53.4 million pounds. We're gonna reject it for the time being just because things at Real Madrid here go on so swimmingly and it's not like his career is dying and he needs a loan move away to try and rejuvenate his form. He's in the perfect environment to learn and grow, so I think Endrick at Real Madrid is going to be a bond, a partnership that we'll be witnessing for the foreseeable future. Simulating to the end of another campaign, I actually did want to play out a Champions League final or just simulate it to witness in real time what actually goes down. Is Hendrik a big game player? Does he score a few in the final or set any up? Let's find out as they take on Roma in the big dance. Yet another out of left field opponent. We'll let the simulation do the talking here in 2027 and Vinicius Jr. and Hendrik both are on the score sheet in a 2-1 win to earn Hendrik yet another European title and lift the holy grail. They've only gone and done it again. Back to back baby. Not only that, he earns a personal accolade in the process, being announced the player of the tournament in the Champions League. Forget the domestic front, this lad's going all out continentally. It's just too easy for him in Spain, as in La Liga, they only lose once to claim their throne again at the top of Spanish football. With 91 points, they finally get their hands on the Supercopa. Endrick can add that piece of silverware to his collection. A 2-1 win against Atletico in the final. Unfortunately though, a slight bittersweet moment, as they couldn't secure the domestic treble. Getting eliminated in the round of 32 to Raul Betis 2-1. Nonetheless, a fourth piece of silverware was won and the UEFA Super Cup was attained with a 3-0 win against the Europa League champions Atalanta. It's just straight up domination and in a season like that, I think Endrick has solidified his place in the starting 11, becoming a true and tested Galactico. As you probably saw before, he's hit an 84 rating and he got there by a plus 5 overall improvement. It's upgrades all across the board and maintains that exciting prospect potential status. Yet to be called up to the Brazilian national team though, but a season like this might sway the selectors way. Not only did that Champions League final goal help Real Madrid win the game, but it also made him club top goal scorer with 33 goals and 3 assists in 55 appearances. This lad is up to something. He is cooking. He earned himself an average match rating of 7.6. That's his career best so far. 36 goal contributions and outscoring the likes of a 95 rate of Vinicius Jr. That penetrator earned him the 5 star skill moves. Collecting all the football all infinity stones with a high attack and work rate. Five star, five star. Strength standing at a 55. This lad needs to hit 
hit the gym and fast. Penalties and volleys could do with some improvement. Things to consider transitioning into season six. He's ranked nowhere near some of the top valued players at the club. But his market value rising 72%, now standing at 57 million pounds on the transfer market. It's going to be scary to see what kind of production he has in store for us for seasons to come. Could he already be considered for the Ballon d'Or? I guess we'll have to wait and see. Thanks to those stellar performances last time out, he now has upgraded to has potential to be special. So dynamic potential is doing God's work. We can expect a world-class 90-plus overall in coming seasons. However, despite all of Hendrik's successes, we're going to have to focus on some of his major weaknesses, like 49 agility, 77 acceleration. We need to level that out with sprint speed. But what we're also going to sacrifice is him having a high defensive work rate, which I know might be controversial, but it's the only way to train agility. Nonetheless, it's a risk and an experiment I'm willing to take. Here is how he lines up in the Real Madrid team. Could quite possibly be his last stint here at the club. However, we're going to give it one last shot in Spain. Here is a Galactico. He's Hendrik without the K because the way he's going, he's fast tracking his way to success, being nominated in the top four and in consideration for the 2027 Ballon d'Or alongside Rafael Liao and two other of his teammates, Vinicius Jr. and Rodrigo. I don't think he's the front runner or the favorite by any means, but it's just cool to see him up for the prize. He's being rewarded for his superstar performances amongst legends of the game and it's an injured Vinicius Jr. to win the Ballon d'Or. Player of the year, deservedly so. I don't think Endrick is ready for that accolade yet. Yet to prove himself really on the international stage either. So Vinicius Jr. is a worthy mentor, albeit teammate for our young Brazilian on the rise. It's a trophy he's won time and time again and at a club like Real Madrid you just expect to win it but they finish our runners up to Barcelona this season. Second place in La Liga as over in the Supercopa they did take that one home 4-2 so a little bit of a consolation prize and the Spanish Cup so it's a Spanish domestic double with a 2-1 win over Mallorca in the final. Hendrix made his presence known as a top tier baller in Spain and he's continuing to do so in Europe with a UEFA Super Cup win against Feyenoord the Europa League champions 2-1. Unfortunately four pieces of silverware couldn't be attained this time around as they lost out in the Champions League semi-finals to Milan on penalties 3-3. No wonder why Liao's been nominated for the Ballon d'Or. He's carrying them all the way to a final. And I mean, it's first world problems, but they couldn't go back to back Champions League finals or Champions League winners despite finishing at top of the group undefeated. The Holy Grail goes begging in season six. I think this might only be a realization I'm figuring out right now because there is no Copa America in career mode this year. Let me know if you guys have the same experiences because it's 2028. It's technically a Euros Copa America year. However, it's just not in the menus to view. Like I can't actually click on the competition. It's like it doesn't exist. The Copa America would be very useful to us. I'd currently be covering it because at this stage, you'd think Hendrik would get the international call up. But for some reason, it's taken me this long to figure out that the Copa America has just been deleted from career mode. I mean, so is Brazil. Their national team, you can't actually select their team sheet or even look at their starting 11 despite them actually being in the World Cup. It's classic EA doing their best to tamper with these experiments and just make our lives more difficult as Hendrik now ranks amongst some of the top tier players in the team. Hendrik at 21 still has potential to be special and has copped yet another plus five upgrade, seeing him one away from the 90s world class range. He's in good form, needs to be hooked up with a crucial first team role, but thankfully the pressing forward development plan didn't tarnish his goal scoring this season. It's an experiment that has gone down well in the books. 59 appearances, 31 goals and nine assists, 40 goal contributions for our baller. And he's just a straight phenom with an average match rating of 7.5. He delivers goals on a consistent basis. It's just scary to witness. Again, outscoring a Ballon d'Or winner in Venetius Jr. It's things you love to see. Nonetheless, the agility has improved up to 68. Other attributes also improving alongside him, but strength still struggling at a 55. We'll keep him on pressing forward for the time being as he's now valued on the transfer market. At 125 million pounds, he's finally entered the nine-figure range club. Let's see what clubs around Europe are going to be interested in him. A 21-year-old taking the world by a storm. And he's pretty much achieved everything there is to do here at Real Madrid. Two years from 2030, the World Cup year. You've got to love the lad's loyalty to the Galacticos. They're the first team that gave him a real chance. Got him that big money move to Europe. And he wouldn't want to go play anywhere else. But I'm not going to lie. Just to make this career seem a little bit more interesting and throw a spanner in the works, a move away might be our best option. We're on the clock for season seven. Here is our first deal offered to us. Olympic Leon coming through with a little bit of a swap deal. Trying to force Marco Asensio back to Real Madrid whilst getting Hendrik in the process. In terms of career progression, I'm sorry, Leon. I 
I just don't think it's the right step forward. In our attempts to try and manifest this Premier League transfer offer, we have received anything but an 128.2 million pounds from Benfica and a bid from Italy with Roma coming through 168 million pounds on the dot. Like I said, we're rejecting them both unless it's a Premier League club or a major European title contender. Hendrik won't be lowering his standards, all right? He's a high value male. Some more offers have rolled in too from the Bundesliga, but most importantly, we've got that Prem deal on the table. An 177.1 million pound bid from Liverpool. We got Dortmund offering up 186. And RB Leipzig tried to pull a bit of swap deal action off. Accepting Liverpool's transfer offer as new look Endrick is on the verge of becoming a red. Taking his supreme talents to the Premier League to prove he's not a one-trick pony and that he can do it in all the top five leagues amongst Europe. In a short time period, in five seasons, he's become a Real Madrid legend. An icon amongst many at the Santiago Bernabeu. He's left his mark and he's arrived in Merseyside. The deal is final. Now that he's 22, no more potential status. He just has that special something thanks to his flair trait. In order to have full control over Hendrik's career, we're going to have to take over the Liverpool job and join the Premier League outfit just to get a deep dive into his true impact at the club. So thankfully here in the 28 slash 29 season, Liverpool are still using that same formation. The centre forward, 4-3-3 false nine. What Hendrik's used to, the Real Madrid formula, if you will, he's going to slot straight into the starting 11. He doesn't have Vinicius Jr. and Rodrigo alongside him in the trident. This time around, he's got his fellow countryman Tete and another South American talent, Diaz, on the left side. Despite his high attack and work rate, we're doing everything in our power to try to keep his attacking intentions true with his instructions as a false nine being stay central, false nine attack and runs, normal interceptions, and defensive support set on stay forward. We'll award our short king with the captain's armband as he immediately strolls into the roster as the best outfield player. Only second to goalkeeper Allison and fellow countrymen. The Brazilian this season will of course continue his pressing forward development plan training. He's got one year to adjust himself here in the Premier League. Here in his seventh season as the World Cup year is approaching. 2030 is on the way. It looks like Liverpool were the kind of step down we were trying to avoid. However, Hendrik has gone from a three-time Champions League finalist to now champions of the Europa Conference League. Not the kind of football we wanted Hendrik to play here at Liverpool, but I guess he's earned them a spot back into the Champions League, now finishing in the top four of the Prem. Hendrik dragging them to a Champions League spot as over in the FA Cup, they couldn't achieve any domestic silverware. Being knocked out in round three to Nottingham Forest 2-1 in an early elimination, and it was a Carabao Cup final loss. Unfortunately, coming oh so close with a 3-1 loss to Chelsea in the final at Wembley. They ended up taking down Celta Vigo 4-1 in a dominating Conference League final display. At least Hendrik's christened his Liverpool arrival in his debut season with a piece of silverware as the newly crowned number 10 has entered the 90s and has claimed his status as one of the world's best. The Reds captain's in excellent form and he's an absolute left-footed messiah. It's taken seven seasons but finally he has achieved double figures in both goals and assists. A master of both categories, the centre forward can do it all with 38 goal contributions, 28 goals and 10 assists in 56 appearances and has kept up that consistent match rating 7.4 Five. He's a big fish in a smaller pond over here in the Premier League and his pressing forward development plan training has seen his agility increased up to an 80. Heading accuracy is still the only maxed out attribute he can boast about and that has seen his transfer market value up 15% now reaching 144.5 million pounds. I'm sure every kid in Brazil is copying the fresh fade turtleneck look. All this in good preparation and building momentum up to the 2030 World Cup. About to turn 23, we'll change up the development plan to Bombardia. I want to see something other than heading accuracy be maxed out at a 99. Just please. Season 8's up and running his second stint here at Liverpool. Let's see if he gets nominated for the Ballon d'Or in a World Cup year and gets that coveted Brazil call-up. The Conference League win wasn't enough for our boy to be on the Ballon d'Or nominees list. Here in 2029, we've got the two formidable foes, Haaland and Foden. Ex-teammate and countryman Vinicius Jr. and Mbappe all on the podium. He can't rely on anyone else else to bring him up in his career. He's just got to do it all himself here at Liverpool. Witnessing his former mentor take home yet another golden ball. Even without Hendrik, Vinicius Jr. continues to tear it up, but I can't wait to see them link up at the World Cup. There's no second season syndrome for Hendrik here at Liverpool. It's only taken him two seasons, but he's conquered England, taken home the Premier League title, 87 points. Well and truly, a one-horse title race in the Prem, and unfortunately they weren't able to translate that to the FA Cup. Sheffield United ended up taking that one home as they face elimination in round six
6-3-1 to Leicester. Same goes with the Carabao as it was an early elimination over in round 3, taking a 2-0 L to Crawley Town. However, what they failed to do domestically, they converted into continental success as we've got a date with Destiny. Endrick up against his former employers, a club which considers him in high regard, Real Madrid in the 2030 Champions League final. Absolutely unbelievable stuff. You couldn't write a script any better as they ended up finishing second in their Champions League group, knocking out the likes of PSG in the round of 16, winning against Juve on penalties in the quarters, and knocking out Frankfurt to set up a dream matchup. All this to set up a grand finale right before the World Cup commences here in 2030. Brazil have actually qualified. They've been drawn into Group H alongside Croatia, the Czech Republic, and Wales. We'll have the international scene to worry about once we simulate and just watch the Champions League final play out. Here's how the starting 11s are going to battle. We've had a few additions to Liverpool with Nkunku and Dalit joining the starting 11. Meanwhile, it's a pretty familiar foe in Real Madrid. Can Hendrik become a Champions League winner at not only one, but two clubs? And the final result is a 5-4 win on penalties. After the game finished 1-1, forced into extra time, Hendrik scored his penalty and it ended up being Tushimeni, just like in the World Cup final, to miss his spot kick and hand the title over to Liverpool. It was all Brazilians on the score sheet. Ballon d'Or winner Vinny Jr. and Tete equalising for Liverpool in the 81st minute. Hendrik was a backseat passenger. Nonetheless, he's the man with the captain's armband and had the pleasure, had the honour of lifting the Holy Grail. The ribbons were red and white and he gets one over his former club. What Hendrik has been able to accomplish right before the start of the World Cup has been nothing short of incredible. And I think he's a shoe in to be caught up to the national team setup with 25 goals and 6 assists this season. That's 31 goal contributions in 57 appearances and keeps up that average match rating of 7 or higher with a 7.24. The down 23 year old approaching his prime and his old countryman on the right hand side, Mateus Tete, putting up similar numbers. He also experienced a plus 2 growth. He's not happy with his contract so we're probably going to have to sort that out. Finally we've got some maxed out stats to boast about. Over in the physical department, the attributes, acceleration, reaction, sprint speed, stamina, attack positioning, all at 99. So we'll be deploying him as a trequartista in terms of development plans for the foreseeable future. With those traits handy, he is now valued on the transfer market at 167.5 million pounds. Seeing him receive a 10% boost across the board and the most valued asset on the roster. There we have it, all the confirmation we needed. Endrick in the Brazil national team confirmed. What we can view is the kind of squad they called up to be on the plane, who they've taken to the World Cup, and Brazil have called up the likes of Rodrigo Vinicius Jr. All players he's familiar with. Current teammates like Tete and Bruno Guimaraes. Surely, with a squad this stacked, they should be front runners, well and true favourites to add a sixth title to Brazil's collection. The World Cup is here for our Premier League and three-time Champions League winner. Can he do it for his nation in 2030? We're about to find out. Could a World Cup final win secure Hendrik a Ballon d'Or nomination again, or even take home the Golden Ball, as Brazil have made it all the way to a World Cup final? Here in 2030, up against France, but here is how they did it. Finishing top of their group with seven points, making it out into the round of 16, where they took down Portugal 2-1. They faced England in the quarters and defeated the Three Lions 2-0, and over in the semis in a five-goal thriller, defeat Spain 3-2 to book their spot in the big dance. Here we go, it's Hendrik's time to shine. I actually want to play this one and see how he actually performs in-game. Gifting him the captain's armband, just look at this Brazil team he's operating in. 93 attack, 93 mid Field, 87 defense. It's the definition of five stars. An absolutely cracked national team that are ready to take home a six star. Coming up against no slouch, by the way, France, who are after revenge for the 2022 World Cup and are led by the one and only Mbappe and teammates past and present in Kunku and Tushimeni. From a boy raised in the streets of Brazil, growing up in the favelas and the slums, Palmeiras' youth academy talent has made his way from an academy prospect to leading out his nation to a World Cup final. Potentially what could be the biggest moment of his career. It has been a monster charge to the final destination and the stage is set as Kylian Mbappe will get us underway. Here goes nothing. And Vinicius Jr. wins the ball back here. It's the old Real Madrid link up the rainbow flick. Big challenge from Militao. Now back inside to our number 10, Endrick. He's going to pull out all the skills in the book here. He thinks it's FIFA Street. Mbappe now charging in towards goal. But Branco has to stop that attack with his bare hands. 
Endrick now linking up with Rodrigo. It's the extra Real Madrid connection. Could find the ball through, and I thought he was offside. Hovering the defense left, right, and center. Vinicius Jr. ball over the top can find Endrick in an abundance of space. It's a poor touch that lets him down. We need the shot. And Mike Magnan had plenty of time to block that one away. Manu Kone. Now back into the path of Mbappe. We take him down. Please don't be a red card. We've injured Mbappe. We're sick and tired of him winning the Ballon d'Or over Hendrik. So he's going to... Oh, he's gotten a straight red. Renan Lodi. Okay. Yeah, we didn't think that one through. And now Brazil are down to 10. With Mbappe still staying on the pitch to fraud. Combat them with a counter-attack. Hendrik... And Vinicius Jr., we love that extra Real Madrid link up here with the ball inside. We've cracked open the French defence now to get past Magnan, and that's an impossible task in of itself. Hendrik is in the middle waiting. He's breezed past the defence, needs that left foot of finesse shots. And oh my goodness me, with his five-star weak foot, he doesn't care what foot he uses. He's a cold-hearted, cold-blooded killer. The boy has only gone and done it. We had to set him up on a silver platter. Took him chance after chance. Catching out Mike Magnan at his near post, it was an unorthodox attempt at goal. In all honesty, didn't even mean it. Thought he was going for the left-footed curled finesse shot into the bottom left-hand corner, but it wasn't to be. And Brazil's golden boy, the poster boy number Number 10 gets the World Cup final opening goal. France trying to claw their way back into this game and get an equalizer. Our 10 man defense nearly thwarted, but Vanderson was on the case. And that doesn't leave us enough time for a cheeky little counter attack. We go into the sheds 1 0 up, cautiously in the lead. Oh, Hendrik himself getting involved in a challenge. The referee doesn't see anything wrong in that. And France. Bolstering forward in the second half already. We barely got kicked off and France mean business. It's Kylian Mbappe to get the World Cup final goal. He's been there, done that. He knows what it takes to score in these big finals. And France are out here wasting no time capitalizing on our man down. And it's one apiece. And now this isn't looking good. This is not looking good. We've brought the keeper out. We've brought the keeper out. Can we clear it off the line? And there we go. Who drifts out wide to 97, Vinicius Jr. And here we go, the Ballon d'Or winner all of a sudden sees Lucas Paqueta and he was in for the second. Mike Magnan single-handedly keeping France in this one. Oh no, oh no, we need our keeper to make a few clutch saves now and thankfully Mbappe shoots wide. Oh, look at this French high press completely catching us out and Mbappe's in for the second but Branco takes him down in what I've seen is the cleanest tackle of all time and how was the ref given a penalty there? He got the ball. You are kidding, referee. Have some shame about you. He got the ball before he got the man. I think that's perfectly fine. Call me a football purist, but that was clean as day. And now Mbappe gets the chance to double the lead. Or get himself a double and get France into the lead. But thankfully, justice has been served. Those are the kind of game-changing moments where you need your stars to step up. And that's exactly what he's done. He can't find Hendrik on the run. 99 pace. What has our number 10 got to offer? He sees Vinicius Jr. on the inside, and Vinicius Jr. now trying with the outside of the foot shot, and the Trevella hits the crossbar. The woodwork comes to France's rescue. Might have to do some substitutions here as France continue to exploit the wings. We're looking extremely vulnerable right now, but Andrew again with the hand of God. 68th minute, we need to get clear, and Rodrigo, what are you doing? Clear the ball. Rodrigo, what are you doing? How has Rodrigo lost out that header? Had all the time in the world. And Manu Kone heads that one home from the set piece. Completely catching us off guard. And the French go back into the lead. Le Bleu got their swagger back. Practiced that one straight from the training ground. Loops the ball over our keeper. Now inside to Vinicius Jr. France's defense are all back. But Rodrigo can spot Hendrik. I don't think he's offside. He is. And it's 2014 all over again. Hendrik having his Higuain moment at the worst possible time. I don't care. We're going all out attack. We need this equalizer. Rodrigo has the chance from the corner. We've completely caught the French defense off guard and Hendrik now one-on-one. -on -one. His defenders are catching up to him and that could have sent the game into extra time. How has he missed that? That was his moment. I think this is it, people. The wait till... 2034 must go on for Brazil as that'll be that in heartbreaking circumstances Hendrik loses the World Cup title to France 2-1 the red card didn't help but Mbappe and the boys have deserved it. He missed his opportunities and that's the key example of what happens when you don't take your chances when they arrive. They're gonna come back to bite you. The South Americans go down to European competition. Endrick got himself that World Cup final goal but then missed his major moment. It's kind of a bittersweet ending to all of this but I guess we gotta push through and continue because that pretty much confirms Mbappe's Ballon d'Or win in my opinion. On the verge of winning his country a major title in his first ever international tournament. You gotta give the kids some props. Still at only 
24, the kid is yet to even approach his prime and in five appearances, he got himself four goals, including that one in the World Cup final, outscoring pretty much all of his teammates and that is a more than respectable tournament. It wasn't to be as Mbappe and Le Bleu claim the spoils and become world champions for the third time. Let's hope he uses that as motivation in his third stint here at Liverpool. 2030's Ballon d'Or nominations are here. Vinicius Jr's out of the picture, but we've got a Liverpool trio of Endrick and Kunku and Tete. Pretty much our entire front three, plus Mbappe, the actual World Cup winner. It's us against the world right now. Let's see if Endrick can cause a major shock upset and take it home. And 2030's Player of the Year, it's actually his teammate, Tete. Is that Tete or Endrick? I actually can't tell. Okay, they've got such similar game faces that I couldn't even tell who it was. It's our boy we created, Endrick, now 24 years of age, hit 93 overall, and he's taken home his first golden ball. It could have been the picture-perfect season. That World Cup title got added to his collection, but it wasn't to be. Now, with over six maxed-out attributes to boast about, he's still killing it here at Liverpool. Merseyside's number 10, doing them proud, and is the first Liverpool player to win a Ballon d'Or since Michael Owen. This could be the perfect way to go out on top. Go out on a high. It's an All-English Champions League final here in 2031. Fresh off his Ballon d'Or winnings, it's Endrick who led Liverpool to yet another Champions League final. It's their little trick up their sleeve. They love finishing second in the group alongside Juventus making it out into the round of 16 where they took down Roma 2-1, defeating Atletico Madrid 4-1 in the quarters and eliminating Inter 2-1, which sees them match up against fellow English competition. Whilst over in the Premier League, unable to get Champions League football and finish in the top four from first to fifth, a major drop off for the champions. However, they did take home the Community Shield against Sheffield United 2-1, so a little piece of domestic cup silverware. It doesn't hurt anyone and goes a long way. They'll be up against the FA Cup champions this year, Chelsea in the Champions League final. Meanwhile, Sendrick's Liverpool losing out to Swansea in the round four replay. However, over in the Carabao Cup, it was an epic six goal thriller, which saw them win on penalties 5-4 against City. It's a domestic double and potentially a Mickey Mouse treble on the cards for Hendrick's last dance. No, actually, I Take that back. This is the most Mickey Mouse treble you ever see. Carabao Cup, Community Shield, and now the UEFA Super Cup. Taking home a 3-0 dub against the Europa League champions, Fenerbahçe. Now is the biggest tried and true test of them all. It's Hendrik's fifth Champions League final and another opportunity to go down as an icon. Is he really about it? Is he about that life? Is he that guy? Let's test out his big game credentials. Those are the two lineups going ahead and doing battle tonight. We're going to watch from afar. Quick sim the game and it's Liverpool take it home in extra time. Endrick did open the scoring in the 32nd minute. Met two minutes later by a Colomuani equaliser and it's his fellow Brazilian Tete to get the last laugh. The final goal, the winning goal in a 2-1 win. It's a familiar sight. We're just used to it at this point. A two-time Champions League winner with Liverpool won multiple at Real Madrid and has just continued that success everywhere he's gone. And now we'll take a look at his final stats. Grinding to that 94 overall rating. He received a plus one this season and could well and truly become a 99 rated maxed out player but I think we've achieved everything we could in nine seasons and this has probably gone down as one of his best in 62 appearances he's been lucky with injury hasn't really picked up any suspensions or long-term injuries along the way with an average match rating of 7.44 he's got 38 goals and two assists you know really honing in on finding the back of the net 40 goal contributions for the South American as we applied the penetrator development plan the training has resulted in these final attributes Take your last look. And now financially valued at 181.5 million pounds, unable to break through that 200 million range. Nonetheless, it's been eventful from a 15 year old kid. Now at 24, multiple Champions Leagues under his belt, league titles, Ballon d'Ors, you name it, Hendrick's done it. It's kind of a letdown considering we probably would have continued the simulation if there was a 2032 Copa America to look forward to, but the tournament just doesn't exist in career mode. You guys can thank EA for that inconvenience. It was unfortunate how that world Cup final turns out, but it is what it is. Let me know your thoughts down in the comments below. What other Wonder Kids careers should we simulate next? Who should we add into career mode? And maybe should we have taken things further to the 2034 World Cup? As always, as you know, I've been Sir BCHD. Make sure to drop the video a like down below. Hit subscribe, turn on the notifications, all that good stuff. Follow me on all my socials. The links will be down in the description below. But as always, have a great day and I'll catch you guys in the very next video.